Welcome to Discipline Daily, where we put discipline first. We are your host, Cal St. Kyle. And I'm Nick. This podcast was created for us to document our self-improvement journey and to hopefully help others along the way. And today, guys, we have a very special episode for you. It's our very first impactful book reviews. And today we have a very cool book, one book that I think has really opened my eyes to a lot of things, like really changed the way that I think. And uh, today, that book is The Compound Effect. So The Compound Effect is something that's, I mean, when I first heard about it, I was like, man, like, that's such a crazy way of thinking. Like, I never thought of things this way. Yeah, not not a lot of people talk about this book, guys. Um, you hear a lot of the other self-help books, but nobody mentions the compound effect. And I believe the compound effect is literally everything. And nobody even talks about it as like a as a thing. I mean, you kind of hear about it in in some financial things, but you don't really hear about it in everyday life and the things that you do. Yeah, like what's that one thing they they start off with? Would you rather have a penny that doubles every day for 31 days, or would you rather have $3 million right off the bat? Right off the bat. What would you rather have? Yeah. A lot of people will say, I think I even did too. When I first heard that it was like, I would take the $3 million right off the bat, but it's you, even you double a penny every day for 31 days, it's some crazy astronomical number. Yeah. Right. Did you, have you ever done the math on that? No, but I know it, it's slightly more. It's not slightly, but it's a decent amount more. So, oh, I think it's like I think it's like three hundred million or something like that. It's some crazy <laughs> number, dude. Crazy, but it is nuts. It's just a penny that doubles every day, right? Yeah, it's you wouldn't crazy. think that would be anything. You're like, oh, that's nothing. It's a penny, but when you double it and you compound, when it compounds, it gets to an astronomical number, and that that compound effect has an effect on every part of your life, not just with money, with your habits, with your choices, with your influence, with every single thing. And we're going to be going over that today. So uh, I think we dive right into it and we'll do some key points. And uh, the first key point that I got from the book is uh, consistency is key. And uh, I think this is true in, in everything you do. I mean, with working out, it's consistency with learning. It's consistency. Like everything is consistency. And, uh, yeah, I think that that's one of the main things in life is just being consistent with things. Yeah, man, that was basically the main reason we named this podcast Discipline Daily because consistency is discipline, right? You got to be disciplined with yourself. You got to show up every single day, no matter what, guys, even the times where you don't want to or don't feel like it, that's when you need to show up the most. Yeah, I think people stop you know, doing things because they don't get fast, fast results. You know, they think that everything needs to be so fast, but in reality, compounding is just slow progression, like over time that like adds up. It's, it's small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals huge results. Yeah, man. That's why you have to have the long-term thinking with all this stuff, right? So if you have the small choices every single day, you know, in the long run, it'll get you to where you want to be if you make the small choices over and over and they're the right choices for one. Yeah. And I think our society nowadays is it's everything is like small, little fast things. It's like fast dopamine hits, fast TikTok hits, you know, next video, next video, next video. Nobody wants to take the time to do anything. They want fast food. They want fast. It's fast everything or how to get abs in, in, you know, 30 minutes. It's like, you know, how to get big biceps in like three, 30 days. It's like everybody wants things so fast nowadays. And that's not how things work. Yeah. You know why they do that, right? To why? distract us. Yeah. Because they want you to have short term gratification. They don't want you thinking long term and being consistent and being disciplined and making the right choices every single day, because that is exactly how you become whatever you want to become. Yeah. And they, and you know, it's, that's what makes people give up is because they do try that. So they'll try the 30 minute ab workout and then they don't get abs and they're like, Oh, that doesn't work. Like that's, you know, that doesn't work. That's this, that's that. And then they give up and they don't do it, but it's really just consistency. It's small, 
small habits, small things that add up by being consistent and over time and it, and it creates huge results. Yeah, man. That's, that's why tons of people give up. Cause they'll even literally try it for 30 days. They'll be like, Oh, 30 days, a long time. Right. Or they'll try it for a couple months and they'll be like, Oh, that's a long time. And then they don't see any progress. And like, I like to think of the compound effect kind of like, um, when you first buy a house, right, you're paying mainly interest on that house in, in order to get into the principal and pay more in principal, you have to get deeper and deeper into your mortgage, right? So you really don't start paying the principal on your house until you're about five years in or whatnot. So that just shows you the compound effect kind of works the same way. It takes many years of staying disciplined and making the right choices every single day to reap the yeah. better. Yeah. It's kind of like w the old adage of like anything that's worth having, it, it takes hard work and a lot of time to, to acquire it. Anything that's quick and easy is worth nothing. So mm -hmm. well, that leads us into point number two, which is the ripple effect. And that could be considered choices, your choices. So your choices have a ripple effect. And if you're, if you're constantly making bad choices, you know, it, it has ripple, it creates ripples. It, it, if you're constantly, you know, not taking care of your health, not working out, eating bad food, what's the consequences of that? Well, that's, that's, you're going to have illnesses. You're going to feel lazy. You're going to feel tired. You're not going to be motivated. I mean, every, every little choice that you make has a consequence and it creates ripples. And I think people don't think about that. Like even their small little choices can create big, huge compounded ripples over time. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of the compound effect. It can either work for you or it can work against you. And they, they go over a really cool example with those. Uh, they take three guys, right? They have one guy that I think he, he just he, – he reads maybe like a little bit. He does a little bit here and there every single day. They have one guy that, you know, maybe he drinks a beer – you know, on the weekends or something, eat some pizza. Then they have one guy that watches like a ton of TV and drinks beer or whatever nonstop. And like over the course of six months, you know, they don't see much of a difference. Right. But over the course of a few years and that guy, th there's huge differences between the three guys. So. Pause real quick. Yeah. Yeah. That one is so true. It's like, if you eat bad, if you're constantly eating bad, let's say you eat, let's say you eat 300 more calories than one guy and then, you know, and the other guy cuts back 300 calories over a long period of time. That person, the person that's eating more is going to gain more weight, be sicker, be unhealthy. The person that's eating 300 less is going to lose weight. And it, that's the compound effect. Like in it's in its purest form right there. Bro. It's, it's really scary when you think about it. And that's why you got to take it. Here's three questions you guys could ask yourself too. Like what can you stop doing? doing basically what choices can you stop doing that would improve your life what excuses are you using on a daily basis and then what steps can you start doing every day what what positive choices can you start making that will have a positive effect on your compounding yeah and i think too it's like becoming aware of your choices because sometimes we we don't we make choices that we don't even know it's like automatic choices that we make and becoming aware of your choices and even the small one, even like the tiny little one. Like there was an example in the book of a guy who was like constantly like putting down his wife, but it was like not putting her down in like a big way. It was just like small little put downs, but it created, it made him do it over time, like a lot over time. And that created a ripple effect to where she started to resent him and he started to resent her. And it created like this big problem. But it, it might have been a tiny little thing that he was doing, just one little small little thing. But over time, that compounded to create them having problems in their relationship. So one of the things the book says to do is to like is to get out of that is to start like writing down things that you appreciate about your wife. Three things every single day to try to reverse that. And that's one choice that you can make to, to you know, improve your relationships and stuff. Yeah, man. Awareness is key. That's a great point. And, and everything we do turns into habits, especially if you start doing it every day. And that's why I think a good pair to this book would be the more popular book of Atomic Habits right here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those two, these two books together are super beneficial. Um, I would probably start with the compounding effect and then go into Atomic Habits. But 
Atomic Habits is awesome. And the main thing that I got from that by creating habits is you want to pick a time and pick a place. And that's the easiest way to form the habit. And, and that's how you could really start making things compound. Yeah. And that, that does lead into our third our third point, which is habits. And and the longer you have a habit too, the harder it is to uproot that habit. Like they, they use an analogy in the book of an, of an old wise teacher teaching his students. And he has them, he says, tells one of his students to go pull out this tree that was like just barely a baby in the ground, like barely sprouting. And the student easily pulled it out. And then he said, okay, go over to this other tree, which is like maybe waist height on him. And it was a little harder, but he was able to pull it out. Then he said, go to this other tree, which was probably like, you know, medium size, a little bit bigger than him. And it was super like he had to put a lot of effort into it to get it out. But he finally got it out. And then he points to a huge oak tree that's just giant, big old tree. He says, "Okay, now get that one out. And the guy's just like, I can't. Like, there's, I'm not even going to try because there's no way for me to get it out. And that's the same thing with your habits. The longer that they've been rooted in you, the harder it is to break those habits. Wow. hundred percent. That's a good way visually to see how habits work. And it's the exact same, man. That's why you got to be aware of it and really t- take a step back and, and look at the choices that you make every single day. And just, just ask yourself, like, is this choice making me better? Is this choice going to make me the person that I want to become? Is this a positive, healthy choice? Is this choice, you know, getting me closer to financial freedom? ask yourself these questions. And if it's not, you should probably stop it and insert one that would be. Yeah. And just try not to live automatically. You know, I think that's one of the big core takeaways from any self-improvement is to become aware and to not live. Cause I think a lot of times we can live automatically because it's too hard for our brain to, to, to do every single thing in the day. Like we'll be so tired, but you have to try to not live automatically and try to write down the habits that you have, things that you've done, like write them down. That's one of the things with journaling that, you know, when I start journaling and you, I'm sure you've already started is like writing down habits and things you've done and things you've noticed so you can try to change it, you know? And, and yeah, they use an analogy in the book too of, um, looking at something in a long period of time. So let's say you have a bad habit of smoking, you know, one, one pack of cigarettes or one puff of a cigarette isn't going to cause your face to get wrinkly, you to look old for you to get cancer, but over a long period of time, it will compound and do that to you. Now imagine if that one cigarette, that one puff of a cigarette caused you all that to happen, like caused you to get cancer, caused you to look wrinkly and old. Would you take that puff of cigarette? Hmm. No, no, right. You win it because you're like, oh, that's going to kill me. I'm not going to smoke that cigarette. But people don't look at it on a long term basis. Like it is killing you. It's just not going to do it right away. But over, but that habit over a long period of time is going to kill you. So you might as well stop and think of it that way. This one puff, even though it's one puff, is eventually going to kill me down the line. And that was the uh, that plane analogy that's also in there where a plane flying from Los Angeles to New York if it's off by just a, a hair, a centimeter, if it's off That's course, number. yeah, it it ends up flying to like Rhode Island. It, it's supposed to go to New York. It's off course by hundreds of miles. And that's just one little, little tiny thing off over a long period of time. And so thinking in the compound effect, that can really help people to break habits, bad habits and stuff. Yeah, I, re- I really like that part of the book, man. And, and they're talking about how can you quit stuff, right? And the best way to, to, to like, say you're going to quit smoking, right? You tell people, hey, I, I quit smoking. I'm no longer a smoker. I don't smoke anymore, right? You mm-hmm. tell people that. So that brings some accountability because you're not going to just let yourself down if you start smoking again. You're going to let everybody else down. And it's kind of the reason why also I, I made my name Calisthenic Kyle, right? It's the same thing. If you're trying to do something, You tell everyone because that brings accountability. I can't call myself Cal San Kyle and be fat. I can't call myself Cal San Kyle and not do calisthenics, right? So if you're trying to do something, tell people about it. If you're trying to quit something, tell people about it. Yeah, it's kind of the reason why we made this podcast. It's, you know, to help to document our journey, but to keep us 
also like on track and to also motivate people along the way. And that's, it's the same thing. It keeps us motivated. It keeps us on track. Like this is what we do. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely your habits are definitely a big thing. And the, another thing too, is a lot of people set goals and they try to, they try to be like, what do I have to do to achieve my goals? But it's, it's not, you don't ask that question. You ask, who do I have to become to achieve my goals? Because you have, you have to change your habits. You have to change who you are. If let's say you want to be somebody that has, you know, a, a girl, a certain girlfriend or a certain job, it's like, what type of person can have that? What kind of person do you have to be to get those things? You know, you have to learn a certain skill. You have to learn this. I have to become this person to have that. Not what do I have to do or what, what do I have to like, you know, figure out it's what, who do I have to become? Yeah, exactly, man. Most people will have their goal, right? They'll write down their goal. They'll have their goal, but then they, they don't think of the steps at all to how to get to that goal. And that's the steps are the small choices that you make every single day. That's how you get to your goal. Yep. It's not sexy. It's not, it's not, you know, something cool. It's mundane, like, inconsequential little tiny little habits that will build up and compound over time over years and years and years that will get you to where you want to be it's not going to be fast it's not going to be quick i know on you know youtube and on tiktok it's like oh i can get you a million dollars in over three months i can do this i you can be doing this it's like that's all baloney dude they're just trying to sell you on things it, nothing comes that fast and when i hear anybody say like oh i made a ton of money in like you know a few weeks it's like I don't believe you, dude. And even if you did, I wouldn't want that because it's the journey and the hard work that makes you the person that can go out and get it. If you lose it, I can remake it because I've become that person. Mm -hmm. All the skills that you've developed along the way. Yeah. And that, that leads in to our fourth point, which is momentum. So when you create that person and those skills and all that stuff, it creates a momentum. So momentum is like, it's like being on one of those like those little little things that you see at the park that go around. And when you start pushing, it's like really hard at first. So you're like pushing super hard. You're trying really, really hard. But then eventually, you know, it picks up some movement and it becomes easier and easier and easier to keep that thing going. You might just have to put one foot down, but that's momentum. So at first, it's super, super hard. You want to give up. But if you just keep going, let the compound effect work. Eventually, momentum will take over. Bro, I, I love momentum too. And you you can tell when you have the momentum. And when you have the momentum, you need to keep it going, right? How do you keep the momentum going? You keep making the right choices. You figure out what works. You figure out what you need to do, right? And you keep doing it. You don't let the momentum stop. And when the momentum stops, you need to figure out how to get back to getting that momentum very quickly. And that's what you got to figure out. Remember, I think we were talking about a few weeks ago, right? Remember I got done with my vacation week and I wanted to jumpstart the momentum because I was eating like crap, right? So I did a 48 hour food fast and that's how I got right back into getting the momentum going. Yeah, because you, you were on vacation, so you lost your routine. And that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things with momentum is routine. So it's routine plus consistency equals momentum. And I think people you know, they don't really have a routine because they, they go to work all day or whatever. And that's, that's everybody, everybody has to go to work and do things. So it's hard to control your midday routine, but you can control your morning routine and you can control your nighttime routine. And that's what me and you have done is creating a good morning routine and creating a good nighttime routine so that we can keep momentum going, even though we have work and we can't control what time we get off or what time we have to be there or how long we're going to be there. So, and what we're doing. So that's another thing too, is like creating really good routines. I honestly got to admit that my nighttime routine sucks, especially compared to yours. You're on point with your nighttime routine, dude. And yeah. that's, you, so that's something I got to work on. I, man, my nighttime routine, it's, it's bad. Not going to lie. It's bad. But your nighttime routine has to set you up for your morning routine, you know? And like I work at a five in the morning, so I have to set myself up for, you know, my, my morning routine at night. So I have to make sure that everything's all my phone and everything. There's no YouTube, no nothing after eight o'clock, because if I don't, my, I get like amped up because I'm still like, I'm, I'm watching YouTube video and watch this crazy thing. I'm watching this. And then I lay, I close my eyes at nine and I'm like, just thinking about stuff. Oh, I'm like, all that. like I'm amped up. 
And so by really cutting it off around eight and reading, like reading is good because it's like really getting you, you know, a lot of people, when you read, you kind of get tired a little bit. And so it's like a lot of people can use that to like, they'll read, they'll start feeling a little drowsy. Maybe you'll read for 30, 40 minutes, an hour, and then you start to pass out. That's why I like reading at night. Oh man. I'm, I'm like the opposite when I'm reading, dude, I get fired up. That's when I'm out, outside reading at night. That's the one thing I wanted to tell you about, man, is I, ever since you brought up, um, this is kind of off subject, but, uh, ever since you brought up, you know, people were not supposed to be in rooms with all these sharp corners. Right. So I started reading outside at night and I started writing outside at night too, man. It's unbelievable. I, I get like lanterns, right. And I'm reading by lantern light. It makes me feel so good, man. Under the stars, I see the moon. It's amazing. I, I love it, dude. So I'm, yeah. I'm starting to get like, we're already outside a lot, but I want to get outside even more now. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's fucking, that's cool. Like yeah. That's something that I like to do too. Like I've lately, like since the sun's been out, cause when it rains, you can't really get out there. But, but when it's sunny out, like I like to go outside and do yard work and do all kinds of stuff. Cause you're getting outside, you know, getting some sun, getting that vitamin D. But yeah, that, that's, that's it, dude. It's like when you, in, in, momentum can carry you in two different ways so if you have bad habits you're going to get more bad i mean it's going to create more bad and if you have good habits you're going to get more good it's like the old saying of garbage in garbage out you put garbage in you're going to get garbage out and it gets easier and easier because once you start making these small that's that's the beauty of it too man it's small like you don't have to do big things it's all about small consistent so it's every single day choices right when you start making these choices, guys, you'll want to make more because you'll notice that your life is getting better and better and better. You're getting better. Everything's getting better. So the more choices you make, so then you don't want to make those bad choices. So it gets easier and easier over time. But the key is you got to stay disciplined. That's why discipline is our number one. That's why we always put it first. So I always put it first. And that, that's going to lead into uh, our fifth point, which is influence. And uh, this one is big, too, because this is something that like I've done lately where I, I literally I know you've already done this, but I got rid of my my cable, my my satellite. I got rid of it. So I don't have that anymore. And that's just another thing that I took away. That's just negative and and influences anything that you're you're consuming. So not, you know, a lot of people think about consuming food, like oh, I consume bad food. And what does that do? That makes your body, you know, weaker. It makes your body not have nutrients. It makes you sicker. It, and what happens when you consume bad media or bad, bad, like th media that you're bringing into your, into your brain, well your brain's going to deteriorate. Yep. That's the same thing, man. People, you got to You got to be really picky with the things that you put into your mouth. A lot of people don't even know that food that they consume makes them look and feel the way they do. A lot of people don't even know that. But the, the third side of that is the media, the, the entertainment, all that stuff. You got to make sure it's the highest quality. Anything you do on an everyday basis, you need to make sure it's the highest quality stuff, guys. So make sure the media that you're consuming is great. That's why I, I, also, I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news. I don't watch Netflix. Netflix is garbage. If I do watch a movie, it's going to be an old movie back when the movies were good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in, I even got into that trap where, you know, with all the stuff going on in the world, I started to, you know, watch, you know, a little bit of news. It was a uh, redacted. So it's like this news channel on YouTube and I would just listen to it while I'm at work. But I noticed that like, I'm, it starts to bring you down in a way, like there's nothing you can do to control those situations. And you're just bringing that information in and you're bringing yourself down. You're giving yourself a negative outlook on life. And that's something that, that you really have to watch out for. Like, what are you putting in your brain? What are you consuming? Like consume books, consume things. Like when just reading this book this week, you know, I read, I, or I listened, I re-listened to it while I was at work and it just inspired me. Like it re-inspired me like right away. Like it got me fired up. And so you have to really find these things that fire you up and save them and, and know them. I mean, get this book and, and buy it in the hard, the, the hard copy, buy it on the audio version, listen to it on your way to work, read it when you're at home, you know, listen to it 15 times. And I'm telling you, this thing will fire you up. It'll get you to want to be like all up on your, your choices, on your consistency, on your habits, on every single thing. And, it, and, and it'll get you to think about what I'm consuming, what I'm consuming. 
and it'll help you to just want to be better. And that's, that's what we need. That's awesome, man. And yeah, one thing you guys could do to consume great information, right, is subscribe to this podcast. And if you like the podcast, make sure you share it with somebody and leave a like, leave a comment if this has helped you out. Yeah. And another thing too that people don't realize is media companies know this. They, they know that we are, our brains are set up to see negative. It's just set up that way. We need, to, we need to be looking out for danger. We need to be looking out for negative things so that we can, can stay away from them so we can stay alive. And me, the media knows this. It's like when you're driving your car on the freeway and there's an accident, what happens? The, the other lane, the traffic slows way down. Why does the traffic slow way down? Because you're forever necking. Yeah, you're rubbernecking. You know, everybody's fucking looking at the thing. Why? Because we, that's what captures our attention. We need to see what what's happening. We need we need to be involved. Media companies know this, and they literally only put out the negative things. They only want to put out the bad thing. You watch the news, and it's like this murder and this bad thing, and this and this and this. But what about the hundreds of thousands of great things that happened that day? They don't ever put that on the news. They don't ever put that really in. I mean. Some movies, I guess, it comes with like a, you know, a story at the end. It's like a, like a good look, uh, an inspirational story at the end. But like for the most part, the TV shows and the media that we watch nowadays, it literally is propaganda to get you to think negative, to be afraid, to not think about, to not think at a higher level. And um, yeah, just be realize that they, they compete for your attention. These companies compete for your attention and they're not going to get your attention by putting the good stuff out there. They're only going to get it if they put negative stuff. Yeah, and we're we're changing that by our little segment of the Twitter news. If you guys haven't noticed, I mean, it's always pretty dang positive. And um, I, I think this time I'm going to have cover something that went over. It's a little crazy, but we're not going to do too much negative news. It's going to be good, positive stuff, and that's that's Twitter news. And that that's going to lead into our bonus point and. Uh, and that's one that I've really been thinking about lately too is uh, it's to learn to use positive expectation. So I think a lot of times, you know, we, we get anxiety because we're constantly looking into the future and seeing what could go wrong. What things like you, you picture the future and you're like, Oh, what if this happens? What if this happens? And you think it's always going to be like something negative, but it hasn't happened yet. You're creating that in the future. And, and I think stoicism talks about this a lot is like, you're creating these things in the future and you're, and you're stressing yourself out about them, but they haven't happened. I mean, how many times have you had, you know, thought of something and you thought, Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be this. And then you did it. And it was, it ended up being great. And you're like, wow, like that was awesome. But why don't we think about that before we go into it? Why are we always thinking about the negative? It's because we're literally like trying to, to think that something negative is going to happen so we can just like stay away from it. But you should think that something good's going to happen. When I get there, it's going to be great. I'm going to get there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you change your way of thinking. Yeah, you could. It, well, I mean, we're all living either in the past or the future. So if you stay present, you won't even have to be like, oh, I'm going to show up and maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Just be like, hey, I'm going to show up and whatever happens, happens. You yeah. know, I'm gonna, you know, and just take it from there. And yeah, you don't want to torture yourself over things and, and the chances are it's not even going to happen. So yeah, you got to stay present. Staying present today is, it's a skill. Same thing. You got to develop this skill. You got to work at it. So you got to take everything day by day. And that's why we like discipline daily. We take it one day at a time. We make the right choices every single day and we stay focused on the present. Yeah. And you'll have setbacks along the way. But like you said, you know, when you you weren't staying on your routine and you were getting, you know, you got out of the momentum. But then what'd you do? You realized it and you got right back on it. And that's mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect. But as long as you're constantly like being aware of the fact that you're not being perfect and trying to change the momentum to the opposite in the good way. So, yeah, that was uh, our review on the compound effect. Wait, I got one more thing. So this person that I know, right. Talking about awareness, this actually happened uh, a couple weeks ago, right? It was a crazy incident, right? So we had uh, some cake around. And then, so this person offered me the cake. I'm like, you know what? I'll take some cake. I, I, I earned it, right? I worked out like a fiend that day. I, I probably did 20,000 steps. I earned some cake. So I'm going to eat some cake. It's fine. 
And then the other person who is a little overweight said, no, like I, I won't take any cake. And I was pretty impressed by that choice, right? That's a choice. And I was pretty impressed. But then as the cake got over to me and got a little closer, that person changed their mind and said, you know what? I'll take a fork and I'll take some cake. And right there. And then I asked that person like, Hey, are you aware of that choice that you made? Like you're, you impressed me by like, you know, having some self-control and not eating that cake. But then they, once it got closer, they caved and they made the unhealthy choice and they weren't even aware of it, dude. They did it by like automatic response. It's, yeah, it's scary. That's probably like why I think, you know, addiction is such a crazy thing and I'm sure we'll do an episode on addiction, but sometimes it's a, it's a habit too. It's, I know there's like a certain addiction cause you crave it, you want it, but also it's also a habit sometimes where even when you want to quit, you can't because that habit is there. It's the habit of doing it. And it's, it's, it's hard to break those habits. You got to really be aware of it and you got to really have that willpower to break that habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only way it starts is by standing your ground the first time. Yep. All right, guys. Well, that was the compound effect. Please buy that book, read that book, listen to that book, listen to it 10, 15, 20 times. Anytime you're feeling unmotivated, give that book a listen or a read and uh, you won't be disappointed. Awesome. All right, guys. So let's get into the Twitter news. Twitter news. All right. So first up, this was the one that just happened. And this happened an hour ago that I saw this, right? This is from STEM, STEM feed. I've never read so fast. This is a type of bionic reading. Have you ever heard of bionic reading before? No. Yeah, bro. This is something that I think is new. It's so cool. So I'll have the picture of this text. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it. Um, it's bionic reading is a new method facilitating the reading process by guiding the eyes through the text with artificial fixation points. As a result, the reader is only focusing on the highlighted initial letters and lets the brain center, center complete the word. In a digital world dominated by shallow forms of reading, bionic reading aims to encourage a more in-depth reading and understanding of written content. So, dude, the way this happens, right, is it kind of bolds parts of the letters. Dude, and when you read it, you read it way faster. You understand it way more versus a text that's just not, it's all text, you know? Yeah. Isn't that wild? That is crazy. It'd be interesting to try that, but... I feel like for me, the part of reading that I kind of like is because I started trying to do that whole like speed reading thing, like how fast can I read? And I was like, I, I, I like not, kind of taking my time with it. It's not speed reading, though. It's like it's it's just you, what, what, you got to try it. You got to read it. Once you read it, it's you understand it better, too. Did you it, try You tried it out? No, I. that's how I saw it. I literally I saw it, I read it. I'm like, what the heck? It just it's way smoother way of reading. It's pretty wow. amazing, dude. Cool. It'd be cool to try it out. Yeah. So that's kind of like breaking news, guys. So that just happened. All right. Now this one's from Compounding Quality. And this is a quote by Warren Buffett. My life has been a product of compound interest. Yeah. See, so he even knows. He knows that all the things he's been doing is compounding. It's not just with money. It's with your, like we said, like with your habits and with your consistency and everything that you do. It's It, it all compounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Warren Buffett, guys, he's been investing in the stock market for probably eight decades. And that's why he has a very long term approach with it, because you got to you got to let your investments grow. If you're constantly buying, selling, you're not getting into the compound effect. Yeah, it's true. All right. And then the last up we have, this is, from, this is from Roz Alerts. This is like my little news source that I have on Twitter, right? This was kind of crazy. This was five days ago. This was another incident with a train. Multiple agencies are responding to a runaway train carrying 180 cars heading 80 miles per hour with no one on it. Jeez, nobody was even on the thing? Currently, no, numerous law enforcement 
hazmat teams and other agencies are responding to a runaway train, blah, 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 180 train cars, 80, going 80 miles per hour with no, with no one on it. And the crew had to jump off. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> it was first reported in, in Baker heading towards Barstow, California, but the train was, the train has crashed and derailed in Kelso, California. Police are confirming multiple train cars have been derailed and damaged. What's up with these trains, dude? I know, man. They need to do some discipline daily on their on their trains, dude. What, what the dude? What hundred going eighty miles per hour? I didn't even know those trains went that fast. I mean, bro, it's you know, like when when the workers need some days off and you don't give them to them. This is what happens. This is <laughs> they had to jump off, like, bro. That's crazy. I don't know what happened to it. This this happened five days ago. Um, crazy. So yeah, we like, won't talk about it. Yeah, so that was like a little actual news, but yeah, we try to keep our news positive here. <laughs> That's pretty pretty funny. So yeah, <laughs> eighty yeah. miles an hour, dude. Come on, man, fix your trains, dude. What's going on yeah. with these trains? Bro, I don't know. It's <laughs> wild. <laughs> All right, so that was Twitter news, guys. Oh yeah, Twitter news in the books. I can love it. All right, dude. So. Uh, did we uh did we have any of those questions left over from last week that we didn't answer? You want to go over that or uh yeah, uh, it's question two from Justin. Uh, what mm-hmm. was it again? It was um what do you want to be if or, or if you weren't doing UPS, what would you have wanted to do? Oh wow. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that, and we didn't we didn't really talk about it. I don't know. You you go first on this one. It's it's honestly a hard one to answer because. I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like I, I love doing what I do. Um, I, I love being a UPS driver. So it, it's really hard for me to answer that question. Cause I honestly, I can't look at a better job. I mean, the best job that I could see that wouldn't be a UPS driver is doing what we're eventually going to try to do, which would be full-time podcasters and, and start this empire that we're going to build. Right. But our goal, I I think me and Nick have kind of talked about this, even if we get big enough, right. We still want to drive because we love doing what we do. Right. So we kind of want to be like Cameron Haynes. If you guys are familiar with Cameron Haynes, he's a endurance athlete, but he's also a really good bow hunter. He's friends with Joe Rogan. And I still believe he's, he's big, right. I still believe he has a construction job that he shows up to. So I think that's impressive. And I think more people need to do that nowadays instead of just, you know, leaving their roots, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is a hard question. Um, You know, I think about it all the time sometimes. And I'm, I think when you're young, you don't really know about trying to find your purpose. Like, at least I didn't, when I was young, I didn't really think about what's my purpose. What, what do I want to do in my life? And, uh, you know, as I've been kind of going on this, this discipline journey, this self-improvement journey, I kind of try to think about like, what, like, what is my purpose? Like, what, what do I like to do? And, you know, some things that I'm very interested in is like the way the brain works, the way people interact, the way, you know, everything, is and and trying to figure out things like and the way the body works and you know so i think that if i wasn't doing this i mean i i would think i would probably try to be in some kind of like way of helping people like something where i try to help people either whether it be like you know uh, personal training or like you know life coaching or something like that like i would think that i would try to like just study like psychology and just try to like help people as best I can be like, cause there's so many things that I have in my brain that I'm like, why do I feel this way? Why do I do this? Why do I think like this? And if I can figure that out and try to help other people, like that would seem like something that I would be, that I would really love to do. And it would like give me fulfillment. So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing here with this (laughs) podcast. Um, So, you know, maybe that's, you know, something that why I'm drawn to this. Now, I think another thing I really like to do too is like, uh, I really like to do as a kid was like film things. I really like to like film things and edit it and make it like cool and like make a cool like video where people watch and were like blown away. I mean, that was something that I really got fired up about when I was a kid. So, you know, maybe something along those lines. But yeah, that's a hard question because our job is 
our job is pretty good. I mean, we get to we get to walk all day long. We get exercise. We get out. We're outside. I mean, we're we're dealing with little stressors every day that are making us stronger. Um, and, and you know, we get pretty good benefits and stuff like that. So it's it, it's hard. That's a hard question. It's a good one though. Wait, but bro, you literally have the opportunity to do exactly what you want to do, man. Like, so that's great that you found your interest. So keep digging into your interest. We have the opportunity to do this on this podcast, right? And guys, stay tuned for the future because this whole thing is going to get a lot better. Like, like Nick just said, he likes to film things, right? We're going to do some cool things with filming, editing, production, all that stuff is coming in the future with the challenges that we're going to be doing, the sparring races we're going to be going to, the fitness expos that we're going to be going to, all that stuff we're going to cover, right? So yeah. Nick has the opportunity to fulfill his interests, and we're going to yes. see it on the Yeah, podcast. we definitely have bigger plans for this, so stay yeah. tuned, everybody. Oh, and dude, okay, so Nick, the book that I wanted to tell you that I was reading, I kind of stopped reading it, but I think it would be right in your wheelhouse is by one of your favorite authors. Who do you think that that favorite author is? Mm, I don't know, Robert Greene? Yep. How well do I know you, dude? <laughs> What's yeah, the book? dude, have you read the book? It's Mastery. Oh, yeah, I've, I've read parts of it. I didn't finish it, though. Yeah, I didn't finish it. It got kind of lame, but the beginning was really good where it talks about finding your purpose and all that stuff. And it's it's like what you're drawn to, right? And then that's how you figure out like, and then you want to master it. A lot of people, they try to, you know, be good at like a lot of things. You want to master whatever you're really good at, guys. Yeah. He talked, Robert Greene talks about that in the laws of human nature, where he talks about like finding a purpose. A lot of people try to work on their weaknesses. They're like, oh, I'm going to focus on my weaknesses. But in the book, he talks about finding what your strengths are and like really, like, like really mastering those strengths. Like don't focus on your weaknesses. Like you can find other people to make up where you're weak, but if you can really master your strengths, like you can, you can kill it in life. Awesome. All right, man. And uh, you, so one thing, one little habit I started doing, dude, is I, I try to do it before going to work, but I always do it when I get home from work. And we've talked about this before, but it's, it's doing more dead hangs, right? So I've been hanging every time I get home, but I, I found a, a higher spot. I don't hang up on my pull-up bar. I hang up on the, the bar that I made here because I could fully let my body go and my feet won't touch the floor, right? Dude, I read that hanging can actually increase your height permanently. Yeah, I've heard that too. And it also does, the, those inversion tables help a lot too. It's like anything that's like stretching your spine. Because yeah, yeah. it's like, dude, you got to think about it. gravity is working against us constantly, especially if you're doing a lot of squats, barbell squats, right? You're you're getting bombarded. Your spine is literally getting hammered, yes. the ground, right? Because dude, I used to be... I used to be 5'11", dude, in high school. I think actually, uh, my like out of, out of high school, I was 5'11". I'm 5'9 and a half now. What? So I'm trying to get back that inch and a half, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, can use a, a little more inches. Yeah, so I'm trying to get that back. So my goal is hopefully I'm going to grow to get back to 5'10". If I can get back to 5'11", that's awesome. I did have that compression fractures on my spine so that kind of didn't help me but i'm gonna try to grow <laughs> yeah dude I, i've been doing the hangs um with my stretching routine and it's i love the hangs I, it's kind of hard for me i don't really have a cool spot for me to get my whole body to hang i kind of do but it's like i have like a couple inches so i kind of it's a lot better than like hanging like with your feet on the ground but um yeah they're awesome dead hangs are oh, awesome oh. You can feel like I try to feel my hips, right? Like my hip bones, like go down and, and man, it, it's, it's so beneficial. Nobody ever talks about doing them. You never see anybody at the gym doing them. You got to do them every day, guys. It's gravity's working against all of us. It's yep. literally working against all of us. You'll feel better. You elongate that spine. You get better spinal alignment decompresses all your whole spine decompresses everything spinal you'll, you'll feel better you ever seen that uh mike tyson thing where he's like i broke my back <laughs> and he's like oh how'd you break your back he's like spinal 
spinal. No. There's like I one part of your back. back. <laughs> spinal. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You broke back is broken. <laughs> what por- a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Uh, uh, spinal. Anything else you've been working on lately? Just that, and then um, just my my writing and reading, and yeah, dude, I freaking I, I told you earlier at work that the this dude on Twitter started following me on on Twitter. He's only following sixty nine people, and uh, he's he's his name is the father who writes. I was. I was so stoked. He, he's got 17,000 followers. He started following me because he liked some of the posts that I was making. And, and man, I, my, my Twitter is just taking off, man. That goal of 10,000 is looking closer and closer. We'll have a 10,000 followers episode eventually. Dude, that'd be sweet. Yeah, and I'll explain exactly how I got there. And um, Oh, and yesterday, Twitter actually, I think they opened up the algorithm, dude. Really? Yeah, Elon Musk put a post yesterday. He's like the I forgot the actual post, but it was something like, you know, at, at noon the the algorithm will be open or something. And I think mm. that's what TikTok has. Uh, and that's why people blow up on TikTok. That's cool. Yeah, that's and cool. I've kind of noticed more interaction as soon as that happened, man. My posts are getting way more interaction. That's how it should be, dude. It should be free. It should be open. It shouldn't be like, oh, we're we're throttling this person down and we're doing this. It should be anybody like the great idea should go to the top. The more ideas that people like should go to the top and the ideas that people don't like should go to the bottom. It doesn't 100%. matter whose agenda is who who's running it. 100%. That's why I'm I'm going all in on Twitter, guys. That's that is my platform. So make sure you follow me at Cal Saint Kyle. Um, I post all types of inspirational stuff. I get messages all the time by people that actually like want me to mentor them one-on-one or, or coach them. Right. And so I just told them to tune into the podcast cause that's the best way. Eventually we'll get to, we'll get to that. Yeah. Right. That's awesome, dude. Well, anything, uh, what about you? Any, what are you currently reading? Uh, I'm reading, I'm still reading principles by Ray Dalio. So uh, it's a pretty good book, dude. It, it goes into a lot of things. Like I, I thought it was just going to be like an economic book, but it really goes into life principles. And, you know, he has a lot of the same type of principles that, you know, you see from stoicism and from like the compound effect, you know, a lot of the principles are kind of the same thing. Um, one thing I've learned from the book is you have to have like, so high, higher level thinking, right? So when I first heard higher level thinking, I mean, I kind of just thought about that as like you're you're thinking on a different like level, like you have more you have more knowledge or something like you, you know, things. Right. But what he's talking about with higher level learning is thinking, not learning, thinking, higher level thinking is. Basically, I think the Stoics, Stoics talk about this, too, is like look at your life from from a like a, a higher view. Like look almost like you're playing a Sims game and you're looking at it like what's going on, what I'm going to do this, what's going to be the cause. Like it's from a higher viewpoint. And that's what he's talking about with higher level thinking. It's you're thinking from a higher, like almost like your, your life is a chess board and you're higher level looking at it, looking down on what can I, what am I doing? What, what habits am I doing? Where am I going? And like you're moving things around and stuff. So that was pretty cool to think of it like that. Cause I always thought about it as like, Oh, someone's higher level thinking. They're just thinking at a bigger level than me. Like they just know more knowledge than me or they know more about business than me, but really that's not what it means. Yeah. I dude, I honestly, I feel like I've been thinking that way my whole life, man. Like um, I I've been playing strategy games my whole life. I love strategy games. I love playing strategy, right? I love chess. I love poker. I love any type of strategy games. And, and that's how you got to look at life because life is one big strategy it's a game. game dude. It's a game. And you got to, you got to level up your character. Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, you know, I'm just getting ready for, uh, getting ready for the baby. And, uh, we just got the nursery painted, uh, looks pretty cool. And then, um, we got most of it set up and then, uh, I'm trying to figure out my uh, workout routine that I'm going to have. I'm trying to cut back it's only a few days a week. So I'm trying to figure out like, or a couple of days a week. So I'm trying to figure out what that's going to look like. Like, and then, um, yeah. So other than that, just, uh, got rid of the TV. So I got a lot more free time to read and do stuff. So cool, man. 
All right. It sounds great. All right, guys. Well, that was our episode on the our first episode on the book review, um, the impactful book. And it's a really impactful book, guys. So make sure you go check out this book. Um, if you like our content and you think other people should hear it, please share it. Uh, please hit the like button down below so that we can get out to more people. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you guys and we hope you learned something. So for Kyle and I, pain is good. Pain is great.